Andrew's Workshop Projects, Part 3. Once again, my friend Andrew came to visit me, this time with the Stuart Model 7A vertical steam engine, which is almost complete and ready to run. This is his first attempt at building a model steam engine, considering that he also made the reversing gear and a crankshaft machine from the solid, I think that the results were quite good. When Andrew arrived, he kept saying, well, come on then, how much, how much? And I just said, well, I'll give you £50 for it. I totally misunderstood what he was saying. What he was really trying to ask me was how many marks out of ten, and I would say about eight. There are some issues with this engine, and there's a bit of a mixture of imperial and metric things on it, which never makes me a happy man anyway. Although the only serious metric issue is the very clumsy groove screw that holds the valve gear together not very well. I don't want to be critical, but there are one or two things wrong with this engine, things I personally don't like, attention to detail, overall finish, and one or two mechanical anomalies. I could go on, but by this time Andrew was actually crying. Most of the time I was joking anyway. Although this proliferation of washers at each side of the expansion link didn't impress me much. And here you can see the difference between a BA grub screw on the drop arm and a metric grub screw on the reversing lever which is much bigger. I know it would appear that I'm being very picky and trying to upset Andrew but I'm not, it's just for the video. He soon stopped crying anyway. I pointed out the problems in this area and said that it was not a good idea to use grub screws to hold parts like this in place. Not unless of course you file flats on the shaft which is too short anyway. I personally prefer to use this method. Here's my triple expansion engine and it's using taper pins and one of them, which has a lot of stress on it, is bigger than the rest. For a first attempt at a steam engine, this really is good. However, I was surprised that he went for the reversing mechanism immediately instead of making a simple engine with one eccentric fastened to the valve fork. There are problems in this area. Everything is loose, there's a bit of a tight spot, and there is evidence of soft solder on one of the eccentric rods. That's enough criticism for the moment. I'm only being overcritical because the engine runs well. It runs fast and it runs slow. And everything is looking quite good. It just needs a little bit more finishing and a small amount of attention to detail. Even with the reversing lever and the drop arm being loose, it still goes into reverse and runs well. It vibrates its way down the bench quite well. The crankshaft is beautiful, it's machined from the solid, and the flywheel's pretty good too, an absolute minimum of run out. I think it's time for a bit of slow motion. It's possibly a good idea to run it in while you've got the wrong size bolts in various places and it's a bit loose and flopping about because at least it's not going to break. The beats are crisp and quite even. I had to tweak it slightly. I rotated the valve fork one revolution because I could hear that the valve was not equidistantly over the ports. And now it is and you can hear the difference. Time to run the engine under load.
as you can hear the exhaust beats are very even move it to there that eccentric makes it go in one direction here I'm explaining to Andrew the sort of theory of operation I do have another Stuart 7A in the workshop that belongs to a customer I fitted the reversing gear to this one and I modified the reversing gear link bracket which has been extended to allow the steam inlet manifold to be fitted to it. I finally found my small turntable, so I put Andrew's engine on the turntable and started to rotate it. I have to say once again that for a first attempt at a steam engine of this type, I would give it 8 out of 10 for effort. Also because Andrew has not had much experience of working with castings. Time, I think, for a few words of encouragement. And those bolts are not in the right place, but they're like that on the drawing. So here we have the eternal argument. Well, it's like that on the drawing. Well, OK, but I wouldn't have put them like that. But it is quite a modification from the drawing, is this? Very much like the 7A that I showed you earlier. It looks quite like this. He's sort of copied it. The difference being my grub screw in the drop arm goes into a detent drilled in the shaft so it can't move. Also, this engine uses the eccentrics machined as a pair so the timing isn't perfect. It runs really good in this direction but it knocks slightly in the other direction. It does, however, overall run very well indeed. hell is this? It's a new design that Keith doesn't like. <laughs> it looks like something it should be on a toilet. It's got a guard on it there. That's a guard so you don't get your fingers in. It's health and safety that is. Whereas well, yours, you get your fingers in straight in and you chop your finger off, look. <laughs> Mine's got a guard on it, health and safety. Yours, it, it needs a red knob on the end of it. <laughs> well, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I think it looks like something that you would hang from, you know, on a string from a light in your toilet. It just looks like something from a urinal. I don't know why. I can't say that I fully agree with Andrew on this. Apart from the fact it's roughly filed up from a piece of steel, it should really be made from gunmetal or brass. And it looks really horrible in whatever position it is in. Oh yes, and the expansion link does not look exactly as it should. This is my Stuart 5A and I was trying to show Andrew at this stage how I normally put reversing gear together. You can see the taper pins holding the drop arm to the shaft and the reversing lever to the shaft. And apart from the functionality, I think it looks better than this. And while I'm at it, there's a bit of a problem with the valve fork. Oh yes, and the gland cover is a bit too thick, because at certain times the valve fork actually collides with the gland cover. Having said all that, and these are just observations, I really am not being critical. Andrew did ask me, well, what's wrong with it, what should I do, etc, etc. A small amount of work and more attention to detail will make it into a fine engine. That's it from Andrew and myself. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.